everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Arise. Thank you all for joining me. What a week. What a week to just remember all that Jesus has done for us and what a day today is, Resurrection Sunday. Let us go to the Lord in prayer and then we will get started. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for your sacrifice for us, God, that we do not deserve. Lord, by your spirit, bring us closer to you. Those who are far away or who do not know you, Lord, give them hearts and ears and eyes to, to hear you and feel you and see you, God. Open up their hearts, God. Remove their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh so that they will follow you. Lord, we just praise you. We give you all the glory, Lord. Allow your truth of your death and your resurrection convict us and transform us, God for your glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I wanted to talk about Good Friday. I know we missed Good Friday because it's already Sunday, thank the Lord, but I, I don't feel that we can just pass over that without addressing it. And I know we talked a little bit about it in last episode, but I wanted to share something that my friend, Clear, I've shared with her, I've shared, you, I've shared her with you guys before that she shared on Friday. Something that I was thinking about was that Jesus literally laid down his life for us. Not only did he did he give up his life for us, but he literally laid down his life for us. So after he was mocked and ridiculed and beaten and, and humiliated and made to carry his cross, he literally had to lay down. So in order for him to be hung on the cross, he would have had to, to lay down on the ground for them to drive the nails into his hands and his feet. He would have had to lay his whole body down on that cross before they could raise him up. So. I don't know why I was just thinking about that, but I wanted to share what my friend posted. Her name's Clear. She is a faithful follower of Christ. She's a wife, she's a mother. She is just an inspiration. She's a business owner. I will put her Instagram handle. It's at clearly stated, C-L-E-E-R-E-L-Y-S-T-A-T-E-D. I'll have Ian put that in the bottom there. If you would like to be inspired, she posts daily prayers, Monday prayers. Just she's got a business where she does scripture cards and devotionals and calendars and little notes for your kids. And now she has a whole new line for babies, blankets, and just wonderful gifts. And I just love her. And I just want, I think that you guys will love her too. And I want to share her with you. She posted this on Friday. It says, Today was the day. Jesus, the very one who had walked the village streets, healed the hurting all around, and led people to love with a different kind of lens, this Jesus was brought before the crowd. His body was beaten beyond recognition, and a crown of thorns was placed upon his head. He walked up the hill carrying the very cross that would hold him. How is it that the Son of God chose to bear all the burdens of those who watched him walk each step, looking into the eyes of those that surrounded him, his heart still fully focused on the will of his Father? His side pierced, his body exhausted, and his hands crushed by the nails driven in them, he took the cross. His body fully exposed, as the Roman officials hoped his nakedness would give way to the ultimate humiliation. But they didn't realize that they, that they couldn't strip him of the authority that was always his. They didn't realize that this man, he was the sacrificial lamb of God. His vulnerability would soon become the key to the kingdom. Before he died, the criminal who hung next to him begged for his life. And our Jesus, who could barely see past his blood-stained eyes, responded with, today you will be with me in paradise, no time wasted. The sky black as night, 
The entire earth experienced the trembling that the Savior had been slain. His body hung as his mother Mary wept at the sight. Those who loved him felt their breath leave their body when he lost his. Gosh, I'm sorry. His holiness, his kindness, his forgiveness, it transforms what we see as good. This day that brought so much persecution and pain, Jesus knew that it was simply promises fulfilled. Because had it have been just one of his children, he would have done it all the same. His love, a forever love, it's impossible to comprehend. Eternity-minded, Jesus set his eyes on heaven's gates as he declared, it is finished. All our performing, all our humiliation, all our shame, all our striving, and trying to escape what we deserve, it is finished. The person of grace has taken our place and he will be back again. Lean in, the wait is here. Will the Redeemer return? Good Friday, the day that revealed he is exactly who he says he is. Friday was dark, but Sunday was coming. And friends, Sunday is here. Resurrection Sunday is here. What a glorious day. And no matter how many times I talk about this, because of what God has done in my life and in my heart, I am, I am broken for what He has done for us, but so grateful that He has done it. Matthew 28, 6 says, Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has risen just as he said. He is risen indeed. The Savior's cross has set the sinner free. The Savior's cross that He endured for us has set us free. I was kind of researching um, Hebrew and Greek um, for the word for the words for "it is finished." And forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, but in Hebrew, "it is finished" is pronounced "nishlam" or "nishalim," and it's the Hebrew word for for finished. In Greek, it, I'm going to probably say this wrong as well. To telestai, I believe, it's the work is complete. And that doesn't just mean that the work is complete, like a task is complete. It means that it is finished. It is carried out fully. And both translations can translate to paid in full. Our debt was paid in full by the blood of Jesus. His righteousness has been credited to our account. Sin is atoned for. Satan is defeated. And every requirement of the law has been fulfilled and God's holy wrath against sin has been satisfied. Our redemption is eternally secured by what Christ has done. But all of that, all of that hinges on the resurrection. Our entire faith, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then he was just a false prophet, then he was a liar. If he didn't rise from the dead, then his whole ministry would be in question. There would be no salvation, there would be no eternal life, no fulfilled prophecy, people would have died for nothing. And we wouldn't be able to trust the book that is the Bible, that is the living, breathing Word of God. We wouldn't be able to trust that if the resurrection didn't happen. But the resurrection is a factual, historical occurrence. Jesus showed Himself to not only the ladies at the tomb, which I love that He showed Himself to the ladies first, because ladies were not really regarded as being able to be trusted or believed in. Um, so if, if anyone was gonna Put a, put a lie in the Bible, they would have said that Jesus showed himself to men first because they trusted the men, they believed the men. Women were just seen as less than. And he showed himself to the women first, I love that. Not only to the women at the tomb, but to the guards, to the apostles, to over 500 eyewitnesses who were still alive. Many of them were still alive at the time that the scrolls of the Bible were written. Many of those same people were beaten and tortured and, and killed, terrible deaths. They died terrible deaths, all for that they wouldn't give in that the resurrection was a lie. They wouldn't, they wouldn't turn from what they saw. They wouldn't turn from Christ. They wouldn't turn from what they believed. And if it was all a lie, if it was all made up, people wouldn't have given in to that torture. They wouldn't have died for nothing. If Jesus didn't rise, then He couldn't ascend. If He didn't ascend, then we wouldn't receive the Holy Spirit, which convicts us every day, sanctifies us every day, 
And the Bible tells us that He intercedes for us. Romans 8.34 says, Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. He can't do that if He didn't rise. He can't intercede. He can't be at the right hand of God if He didn't rise. The resurrection proves who Jesus is. It fulfills prophecy. It proves that we have hope in Jesus. It proves that no matter how dark things may seem, that it's not over, that it is not over, and that God has accepted the payment for our sin, that we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. We are forgiven. Above all, it proves that the Word of God stands true, that we can believe that what the Bible says is true, that we can believe that Jesus is who He says He is. Above all, that is what the resurrection proves, that God is who He says He is, that we can trust Him, that we can believe this Word, this living Word that we have in our hands. We can believe it to be true. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is our Father. And if you are a believer, praise God. Praise God that you have been given that gift because you have everything to gain. If you are an unbeliever, you have everything to lose. Don't you want to seek who He is? Don't you want to know this man that gave everything for you? Pray to know Him. Seek to find Him every day. Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. For who the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand at the throne of God. For the joy that is set before us, for seeing Jesus face to face, for falling on our knees and, and worshiping Him, for eternal life, for salvation, for the forgiveness of our sins, we can endure this life. We can endure the pain that of, of some of the things that are set before us, the, the trials, the tribulations that we face. We can endure, we can endure that for the cross. We can endure that for Jesus. He endured for us so we can endure for Him. John 11:25 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this, this Resurrection Sunday? Do you believe that He is who He says He is? If you don't, I encourage you to seek Him. Seek Him, pray to know Him, pray to know this Redeemer. Pray to know this man who gave his life for you, for your sins. Pray to know him. I, like I said, I'm just, I just become so overwhelmed with emotion, especially this week, and, and I feel it all the time. I, it's a love and a grace and a mercy that I don't deserve because I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I am being sanctified daily, but we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. We are not who we once were. Thank the Lord we are not who, once, who we once were when we are new, a new creation in Christ. And I will just live my life in gratitude for that. And I pray that you guys can all do that this Resurrection Sunday. Have a wonderful week. You are chosen. You are chosen by the Most High King. Give gratitude and glory to Him. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.